Welcome to Rude Awakening, the podcast. We assume that you're here because you've watched our documentary and we would just love to take the conversation a little further uh, in a weekly format. We will come together, discuss quotes and inspirations from the documentary and invite you, our followers, into the conversation with us. It's an interesting thing, especially when you're sort of at the, the entry level of spirituality and this idea, you know, because the spiritual community is by and large more welcoming, right? But I find that there's still just as much dogma, right? If you don't change your name to broccoli moon angel wing and only eat these things on these days and wear this and say, you're somehow not spiritual. As if anyone can tell you about your personal relationship with the divine. And I think that it's, you know, you go into it and again, it's like that analogy of being the teenager. You're trying on different personas. You're trying a new way of being. So, hi, Sandra. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> just listening to that uh, that clip, just it always cracks me up. It was, I think, when I listened to it in the edit, it was, I, I was just like, oh my God. I remember like walking over to you, it's like, oh, you have to see this quote. And he's like, is he really saying broccoli moon angel wing? And I remember recording it being in this little tiny apartment house thing in LA. And, and Andrew saying that it was definitely one of those very memorable moments where all of us cracked up laughing and we, we needed to be so quiet because of the microphones. But this uh, was definitely the one thing that I felt we need to start off with as a quote, because that will be that will be in the memorabilia of Rude Awakening forever. Absolutely. And, and I remember um, thinking, oh, oh, we have we have something special here because, you know, we, we don't want to make fun of spirituality. I mean geez, we came through spirituality, all of us, but to to make such a joke about it and just almost like debunk the holiness of it, I, I, I really like that. But I think that's the beauty in general when you make fun of something. If you've walked the talk, then it's totally fine. Like I'm allowed to make jokes about Germans <laughs> and there's plenty. So you're allowed to make jokes about that. I'm gonna keep that. you to that in this show, yes, by the way. <laughs> absolutely, please do. Um, so for the, uh, the the viewers that are listening to this, um, um, what we're going to do each episode is listen to a quote from the movie uh, that made it into the cut or didn't make it into the cut and uh, literally almost kind of break it down a little bit. So break it down into themes. Uh, and so what Andrew just said is basically a three-parter. Um, first of all, He's talking about spiritual communities being more welcoming, and I totally agree. Then he talks about the doctrine of it, like if you don't, you know, commit or, you know, completely uh, give yourself to all these like things you have to do, uh, then you don't have a certain level or you're not good enough. Uh, and then the third part is where he sort of says you're kind of like a teenager trying out different personas, different outfits. And as long as those outfits are, you know, if you hold it lightly, you can basically take, take them off again. It's fine. But if you try an outfit on and then, you know, have to live with it the rest of your life, that's kind of a, a problem. So three themes. Um, which one would you want to start with, uh, Sandra? Well, definitely the spiritual community being more welcoming because that's really where we all start, right? Like when yeah. you're when you're at the point where life doesn't make sense to you anymore, where you are asking those questions, who am I and, and why can't I fit in? Then you also have a sense of feeling lost. You don't know who you are anymore because the old identity is going. And I think it is a very normal human thing to do to look for another place that feels more opening, more welcoming. And that's spiritual community. It was the same thing for me. Coming together with people that might have come from different backgrounds that I probably would have never met. That in itself was so exciting, but that didn't give me the feeling of being welcome. The feeling of being welcome came from me being vulnerable, me being totally myself because everything was stripped away from me and then all of a sudden you meet people that go here is something so meaningful and so sacred and so holy and i'm willing to share it with 
people. That's and, and that's the human journey, you know, that right. the human needs to feel a re- relatability and a feeling of being understood and, and, and being heard and seen. And it- pro- most of the time, I think that also is something that when you come into awakening, that's the one thing you're missing in this world. Nobody understands me. Nobody sees and hears me. So you feel alone. You feel lost. You feel marginalized. Uh, yes. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, it was it was actually exactly the same. I had a I had a big big turning point when I was seventeen, uh, having hyperventilation attack uh, after smoking too much, too much weed, and and then started really searching from that moment on. And and pretty much immediately, I stumbled across spiritual communities online and uh, cuz i think the internet was just open by that time <laughs> no I will, n- five. I will not say how old i am um, so that that was and, and immediately I, and i think my brother slept me cuz he was he was looking a lot for answers too so i think he slept me to a lot of these courses like um, uh, uh, what do you call them family constellations we went to a meditation course uh, singing bowls, sweat lodges. <laughs> so it was one after the other. But I, I also felt a sense of I can be vulnerable. And there were not a lot of guys back then. So I was, I was usually, me and my brother were the only guys uh, for a long time. But you can, you can speak about these things without being ridiculed or, and without people looking at you like, you know, they just saw water burn. And that in itself, and it didn't even, it wasn't even about the courses itself or what they taught. It was more hey, we're all looking for answers. Uh, come sit in the circle and let's talk about it. Yeah, and where else uh, have you had that experience, right? Probably just with your friends um, doing a sport with some other people that share the same interest. But to come into a community and feel, A, it's okay who you are and what you come with, and then all of a sudden noticing that you're not alone on your search for more. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think the not feeling alone part, uh, that was a huge relief for me because I felt uh, after that, you know, basically my awakening moment happened when I was 17, um, I was afraid to go out of the house for a couple of years and, and I kind of like found my transformation or, or my, my solace in sports. So I went, went to the gym a lot and I really, I really try to make myself more physical, more grounded to not float off into outer space. And I think a lot of listeners would probably recognize that. And then, you know, you meet these people in these courses and you go, fucking hell, I'm not the only one. But how long, and that's an interesting question that just comes up within me. From the moment that I had my awakening, I had no clue that that was my awakening. I just went through something that was so horrendous uh, through panic attacks, um, completely depersonalized, no idea what was happening to me. And it was years and years and years later that I only started reading about spirituality or reading about energy. And then, you know, my ears poked up and was like, oh, well, here's something that seems to resonate. And then consequently, after having studied it for a little while under the blanket kind of thing like with, my, <laughs> with my flashlight. Secret covenant. Exactly. Then I felt comfortable enough because I, I saw that that old part of me wasn't working anymore. I needed to right. really, really um, do a little bit more digging. And then I went into the community. So for me, in hindsight... Um, by the time you get to the spiritual community, you have had a series of, and the, you know, the time frame might be different for everybody listening, but you have had a series of uh, moments where you just went, Jesus, you know, how do I even... No, and I think you're absolutely right, because for me, it was four years after that moment when I was 17. Yeah. It was four years almost to the dot that my brother took me to the first spiritual course. So four years, I was basically first in survival mode. Then I went to the gym and then I slowly discovered, hey, I'm so much in my head that, you know, working out gets me in my body and I'm very physical so that I needed to be grounded. And then I started to work, to go like, shit, you know, this can't be the life. I can't be traveling from home and to the gym and back and then not be, you know, be afraid to do anything social. So I started to look for 
answers then, but I, I agree with you. It was it was, it was more re retroactive after having done a couple of spiritual courses and like, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. The question didn't form until maybe even five, six years later that I could truly say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on some sort of inner journey here. First, I thought it was an outer journey because I tried to copy all the spiritual people. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's true. Like when you're in it, you don't know what the, that, 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 that's the journey you're in. No, you just feel completely confused and lost. And, and, and not to say that that goes for everybody because everybody comes into their awakening through different experiences. I think that that is a very individual process. But it's interesting because when you talk about it in theory, you go, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. first you just go like, oh, I don't want to belong to this world anymore. Let me go and find a community. Oh, awesome. You, you know? go to the spiritual <laughs> shop and you get yourself a subscription. Exactly. It's, it's not yeah. that linear, is it? No. But coming back to, to what Andrew was saying about the, the spiritual community being more welcoming, I did experience that. I, I did experience uh, whether and, and I did I did a lot of different things. Um, so whether it was the more native kind of sweat lodgy thing or when it was like family constellations or even <laughs> Maori pain massages, I swear to God, this is what I also did. And um, but there was a sense of you can be who you want to be. You can say what you want to say uh, to some extent. Um, and then after a while, and this was after quite a while, I would always run into the to the the structure or the doctrines of that particular group, and sometimes it was in one day, and sometimes it was in a month, and sometimes it was in a couple of years. But I always would hit the ceiling. How was that for you? Like I think reflecting on it in hindsight, that as soon as you try on something new, and and you know, let's go along with the metaphor of a new costume, for example. It's new, it just feels new, you sort of have to settle in a little bit, you have to see how do I feel in it, how, what does that do with my appearance, how, you know, how, how is my whole attitude changing through that identity I've just put on or through that new, new thing that represents me. And then when you become comfortable in it, then you go, well, you know, the I don't know, it's a little scratchy or it's itchy here. Actually, it's not quite suited in the in the waist for me, yeah. right? Then you, but, but you need to come to a place of feeling comfortable first. And after that, you start going like, okay, that could be better. That I could change that. And you that have will, to know what it is to adjust it. Yes, but that, you know, you saying sometimes that was the case relatively quickly that you were questioning, oh, you know, like what are the rules here and do so I actually me, agree with yeah. it? Um, it really depends with how quickly you come to your understanding of, oh, okay, so now this feels comfortable, but now I'm noticing here's the next level because it keeps going. It's that onion yeah. you keep peeling. Yeah, and that's, that's actually a good point because sometimes it isn't even about the doctrine. It's just that you're moving, you're yeah. moving to a different level or a different space yourself. You're on a journey of self-discovery. Yeah. And that is a journey of layers. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, we kind of skipped ahead, but, you know, I think it's great. So trying out different costumes. And I love what, what Andrew says about the, about the puberty, because what do you do when you hit puberty? You know, you try on different clothes. Uh, usually it's, it's kind of like, you know, if I look f back at photos of myself from that day, I'm like, oh, my God, what was I wearing? You, 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 you know, you still haven't got the balance right. So... You just slap some clothes on or, or some makeup on, and uh, but I but I do like that that the analogy of trying out different costumes. Also in puberty, it levels out. So when you hit like eighteen or nineteen or twenty, you sort of know what works and doesn't work. You don't have to prove yourself so much. So it sort of settles down, right? You start usually you start with rebellion, yeah. right? Like, and. I'm I'm a woman, so you start out with you know putting some makeup on, and then you know, like noticing okay this might be a little bit too pink, might be a little bit too red, and actually mom doesn't allow me to do that in the first place, which was kind of the reason why I'm doing it. And add I'm, a little bit more pink. Then. Exactly, and you know also being a mother, um, you just see that there comes a certain time in in the child's whole evolution that they ask those questions and then they usually need to rebel or come to a certain 
um, stubbornness within the system. And that could just be the family system at home, but it's the same thing in every other system. Right. So yeah. you take the same stubbornness, you need to come to a certain point of, yeah, I need to rebel against something. Then you overshoot the, the goal, you overshoot your aim, and then you come back to, okay, what's the sweet spot here? How do I feel comfortable? Right. Which is kind of funny, it's sort of a little bit of a tangent, but what you see happening in the world right now with woke culture, identity, sexuality, is like everybody's so like almost like over the top looking for their sense of identity, their sense of belonging. And I, I feel the same thing is happening. They now the world on a larger scale is thinking about these things that that if you're on a spiritual inner journey, you would have thought about this you know, a little bit earlier. But now after COVID, it, fe it feels like the whole whole world is sort of, you know, getting ready to, to take responsibility. But I'm glad that, you know, I, oh, yeah. I did not. I personally had my whole awakening a long time ago. So that was probably 22 years ago. I came into my awakening. So all of that journey started and the, the, the whole, you know, my life falling apart or being in shambles way before that. So the years that until I noticed I was in my awakening, probably around 25 years ago. And at that time, the world wasn't where it is now. So the whole woke culture, I think, is a great metaphor of where the world is at in with awareness or consciousness on, on, on a large scale, but also now seeing the whole cancel culture, it just makes me icky. I, I just feel I'm so glad that I didn't do my awakening in that system the way that people have to go through it now, maybe, yeah. uh, where it's so difficult. You cannot say the right thing. You cannot do the right thing. You're immediately called out. You're immediately labeled. People label themselves which it, I think it's kind of a whole topic for a different right. <laughs> podcast. But it, it almost feels less free than, yeah. than before COVID, which is kind of interesting. Under the, under the guise of freedom. Yeah. So it's almost like, like the world without judging it too much, because it's, it's, it's obviously going pretty fast. So I, I feel the balance is coming much sooner than, than, you know, on some topics in, in, in the past, maybe. But I, I feel, I feel it needs to happen. It, 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 it needs to go through. It needs to be pushed through for people to find the middle, yeah. uh, in, in, in my opinion. And, and I, I don't think it's, it's any more different than um, what we're talking about the costumes. I think it's now the whole world is now trying out yeah. different costumes. There's much more choice than what, what we had or what we allowed ourselves to play with. Well, I think, I think that the evolution of spirituality, when we went into it around about the same time, um, that was still the mystery school. It was still a very old system that was sometimes very dusty and inflexible. So you need to go out of it in order to evolve further. Now the system evolves with you. Yeah. It just feels that, you know, that's, that's one movement that I can see happening in the world where because we are confronted with so much information and it's so easy nowadays through the Internet, which we also didn't have back then, <laughs> when the world was still in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> when you had to call people and make an appointment <laughs> exactly, and then show up at said appointment in time. <laughs> nowadays, when people call me, I'm just like the the audacity to just call me. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> but then you always we get mad when people call you Back now. then we needed to pick up the phone without knowing who was on the other side. Oh, I mean, that's like, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. I mean, spiritual communities um, are definitely the, the first nest that you feel where you can sort of dry your wings a little bit and you can, you can sort of just be a little bit more nurtured and be a little bit more held within a community. And it, in our case, it was spirituality, which I think doesn't necessarily need to be true for everybody, right? No, Is I, it just community, maybe? No, yeah, I, I, that was going to be my next question. What, what would you think? Because I, I think a lot of the, 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 the generations of, of, of now, like the, the last, you know, maybe 15 years, but especially the generation that's now becoming sort of adults, uh, I don't think they're going to go through spirituality at all. No. Um, how do you see that? Like, like, what is what is your what is your your, your Nostradamus prediction <laughs> on? Because because that you're talking about community, and I, I completely agree. There is a sense of belonging that I think is very mm. very human. 
But how is that going to go with the new generation? Well, we're being confronted with the consequences now that we talk about in in the broad terms, we're talking about the journey of self-discovery. You and I did it through spirituality, right? That, and and that's that was a preference that at the time when you wanted to grow, you used a lot more of those yeah, expressions. It seemed, in it seemed right at the time. It, it yeah. seemed right at the time, right? And it wasn't also so broadly available like it is now. So now we're, we were able as a... Um, as a world to, to sort of go, well, maybe we don't need spirituality in the same way because it's just another doctrine like, you know, right. Andrew or Amar says, uh, rightly so. So now we're noticing, oh, it's just a journey of self-discovery. And now what's missing in the world is community. That's why we're facing such a huge problem with mental health, yeah. which is a pa passionate topic of mine <laughs> that I just love to talk about because it's so misunderstood what's happening after COVID and even before COVID people were struggling with mental health because it's a journey of self-discovery that you're going through as a human being in conscious life and since now the world is doing that at large a lot of people don't know what's happening yeah then a pandemic hits and you're stripped away from community you're stripped away from belonging you are basically catapulted into the dark night of the soul which at the time when you know it, what's happening, it's fine. That's also why we made a documentary yeah. about it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think anybody would say, oh, that was a really pleasant experience, but at, at least if you know you're going to mush, it's, it's a lot better. Exactly, yeah. but most people don't know nowadays and they're just extremely lost. So that's for me, looking into the future where all of this is going, I think, and this is coming from somebody, by the way, who is not necessarily a huge fan of humanity in, at large, because, <laughs> you know, I, I am an introvert. I do like to spend a lot of time by myself or with very, very few chosen people around me that I, you know, that I like and that I f feel comfortable with. But now that, you know, we're going into a time where this is going to be so important, how will the world, especially with technology, react going into this next step i don't know what i what i found and i i completely agree what, what i find really interesting is, is looking at some of the and I'm a, I'm a i'm a big tech nerd for the people that know me so i, I love to, to sort of keep keep up with the latest developments but what i see a lot in in the development of ai chat gpt um mid journey though you know those ai photo generators and and you know soon to be video generators that a lot of the young people are now actually using that for school and schools are freaking out because you know you can do a whole inscription of 600 pages by chat gpt um and can get away with it because it's literally writing it on the fly and not referencing i remember uh, back in the days when we needed to do our homework and you <laughs> were at the early stages of the internet it was just a couple of main sites you were using yeah. like wikipedia or something yeah. so then you and were believing you, everything was on there was true well <laughs> you know apart from that fact but even if it was true you handed it in and the teacher was like well i know exactly what pages i need to yeah. check to see yeah. if you cheated here <laughs> yeah. well good luck with that nowadays yeah so 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 what I, where i think this is going i think it's going to make education either well not obsolete but i think it's going to completely throw it on its head and i think it's very needed where AI might actually take over educational parts. And, you know, the good thing about it that AI can actually um, see what kind of character, so it's, it's more individual education. So what, what uh, character, characteristics the student has and actually make a very specific curriculum, like uh, educational package for that specific person, whether they're introvert, extrovert, HDHD, very quiet, whether they're a dancer or a mathematician, it doesn't really matter. The AI will just, you know, get the algorithms and, and just, you know. Which is fantastic. So, so what seems as things are going on their head, especially for, I think it's the opposite. I think it's actually reversing. I think now because, you know, the old educational system is not changing at all. It's 500 years older. Actually, it's, it's, it's actually invented with the Greeks almost. So it's, it's extremely old. And it's just not cutting it for, for a class of 30 people all getting the same education 
while there's wildly different character types. So I think also that's why a lot of people also go a little bit crazy because they're not seen. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, though, so I think the muscle memory of mass consciousness, having gone through the past um, centuries, we're used to walking a path where you need to be different in order to understand who you are. What happens now if you don't, if, if there is no more difference to be found because everything adapts to you? Yeah. What happens? How does the journey of self discovery change or how does the, maybe the dynamics of self discovery change if it's not through being different? Yeah. That's a very interesting question, isn't it? Especially because in a culture where, you know, it's so woke to, and again, you know, I'm really risking here to be, <laughs> you know, this first episode of the Rude Awakening yeah, podcast. Yeah, we're diving right into <laughs> the bear. I'm already cancelled. <laughs> you will but, never work in this town again. <laughs> but you see how, how much people need the feeling of being different. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's still, I, I think that's a very good thing. I, I just think, like like you're saying, I think the, the dynamics are changing where uh, ultimately it's it's not about the tattoos you have or the type of you know hair you wear or the type of clothes you wear or the things you say or, or even in which communities you hang out with. I think it always, you know, I think we're community creatures of, of habit and community, so I think it's always going to be... Um, it's always going to play a role, but you're right. If you take all of those things away and, and also, you know, specialism, you know, you used to have a massive education to be, you know, a Photoshop specialist or a director or whatever. Now you yeah. can literally with a couple of pieces of software, you can make pretty much anything now. How long would it have taken you to edit Rude Awakening if it was still on film? <laughs> uh, it would probably come out in... T- Right about the singularity time where it completely is, you know, unrelevant. No, because I, I really think that's that's an interesting point, that if you take the difference away, mm-hmm. and of course we all have different characteristics, I, th- I don't think that's ever going to change, but in the way we are different to the outside, you're, you're like AI is going to completely, and, and technology is going to completely level the playing field. What's the only thing you have left? Yeah. Is authenticity and so, feeling. So almost your inner voice. How important is it to introduce um, a way for the young ones coming into this world and that are starting to, you know, get a grasp of what they've gotten themselves into when they <laughs> signed the reincarnation contract? Um, how important is it? And that's again one of those topics that I'm really passionate about to teach them as early as possible an understanding of self. Yeah. That for me, that's the one component where I was like, it, it's so staring us in the face as a humanity. How can we not? And and I, I think it's it blows my mind, literally, that that is not the first yeah. thing you teach, get, yeah. get taught on school. When you're five years old and you have to go to school, that should be the first class. Yeah. It's almost I amness or or identity class, right? And how do you take care of that self, right? So so who is that self uh, in this world? And how can I make sure that it doesn't overwhelm me? Because right. it's just so fast and because there's just so much coming at me, so many opinions, so much, so many expectations, right? So well, I think- And so many truths, because yeah. I think they're, they're coming to the point where, where, and I come a little bit from a special effects background, but I can't see the difference, almost can't yeah. see the difference anymore between deep fakes. So all but, but let me little just quickly, because this is really important for our listeners, I feel, because I get you, we know each other really well. So we're talking about um, education. We're talking about like how do children that are coming into this world that, you know, start to understand the system, start to, un- start to understand themselves. And now you talk about technology. For us, when we talk privately, we see that the, there's, it's so interconnected. Technology and consciousness and society right. are a direct reflection of that whole discovery as a, as a world. Like, who are we, right? That's why I think it's totally right to bring that topic in, to not be able to tell the difference between um, this or that. So uh, discernment, is that the right word? Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
And, and, and I think we are forced because we can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fake. And, and now I can because I was in that industry, but most people already can't. And I think it's going to be a year or something, maybe less, that the special effects guys themselves, I mean, maybe when they do deep dives into the graphics, but... I started disconnecting with Bob the Builder, so... <laughs> so, so, so what is left is if, if there's all these media sources, so you can have information from all directions, all these, everything comes at you, especially when you're younger, uh, tries to grab your attention, tries to get your number, tries to get your location, try to get your behavioral stuff. What's the only thing you can count on? is your inner yeah. inner compass, your feeling. Yeah. Because your mind is, is I mean, I don't, have, I don't have a clue with all this information. I started watching the news again recently, and it's just the only way I can watch it is really high level and just feel energetically what the topic is really about. But if I really focus on the text, my mind goes, oh, you know, yeah. and I have opinions. And so I think, I think, it's, I think it's a really good thing that we are thrown onto ourselves, as, but now as a, as a, as mass consciousness, as a as a society, yeah. and and yeah. so so I think it naturally it's going to take some adjustment time mm -hmm. and some you know wrong turns and maybe some excesses. Where I, I think there was a UN meeting recently where where a guy deep faked one of the ministers mm -hmm. and all the other ministers didn't notice. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the first like, oh shit, here we go. But I think it will level out. I think ultimately it, it really has to has to put everybody back into their Yeah, yeah. and that's the challenge. I think that, you know, because every every challenge um, has the reverted gift, right? I mean right. it does happen for a reason. The pandemic for me, even while it was happening, I could see that there is such a potential to come out of this as a better version of ourselves, right? But I want to go into something um, that just while you were speaking, it was coming back for me. When we talk about you kind of needed to be different in order to understand the self, mm -hmm. it makes total sense to have had that, you know, necessity to change your name. Broccoli Moon Angel Wing. I mean, yeah. come on, right? So, My dad was in the in the in the uh, Bhagwan, the, the yeah. Sri Rajneesh, and uh, his name is Hein, and he changed his name to Swami Deva Hein, and later to Jokar, and I had to call him that. Yeah. So. <laughs> my allergy to those at this kind of point is hi, very hi. high. Hello, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Uh, no, but the, 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 for me, it really is very interesting to look at. Okay, so you need to change your name in order to be different. Now everybody changes their name, their pronouns, their yeah, their label. It's okay to be to to be wearing different clothes, to be you know having even the most flamboyant and extrovert and absurd kind of identity in this world, right? So even changing your name will probably just go, people go on the street, okay, you know, who cares? Back in the days, 20 years ago, when Amar was going through his personality thing, then it makes total sense. But yeah. now, you know, I, I think all of that, basically we made a documentary about a very old journey. Yeah, in a way. And I would love to see what kind of documentary would we make in five years, in 10 years time right, with, yeah. with the understanding yeah. of that? Yeah. And, and we, we, it's interesting for, for our, our listeners that there is, of course, reawakening is now out and we're getting a lot of, um, you know, a lot of positive feedback and emails, but also some questions about diversity and some questions about, Hey, we're, we're the young people. Um, and of course, they're in the in the street interviews. But for me, that would be really, really interesting to to deep dive, almost with the same spiritual because it's not really spiritual. It's just the dynamics of this journey, no matter where you start or end it. Um, but to, to to look at it through the lens of uh, the younger generation, because because they have so much more to deal with in terms of information than we do. So much more choices to make. But isn't it, you put the two together, like for me, it, it would just be totally interesting to say, here's the young ones who are so tech savvy. I mean, I have no clue. Like I said, you know, I lost, I was disconnected from that whole world a while back. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I, I don't really think Come I'm on, doing you it. Love it. You love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I love being an end user and it's becoming more simple to um, be part of it. But, you know, the whole... Um, 
details of it just escape my understanding and intellect, which is fine, you know, I have to have different other qualities. So, but to put young people who are so born into this world with understanding of this world and technology and where it's going together with the old ones that are rooted in themselves, to, that are rooted in also, to be really fair, the understanding of you kind of have to work at yourself. You kind of have to put the work in for your own success. And that doesn't mean you need to suffer your way through it, but the ability to stick with something, to have yeah. an attention span that's longer than five minutes. Yeah, you do really see that with a, with a, with a newer generation. That, for me, comes together, the, yeah. the, those two qualities. How do you see that? Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of similar. I, I, I do like, I mean, you know me, I like contrast. So I love putting two things together that are opposites. Because it's interesting, because two opposites, then you, as a viewer or as a listener, you can, you can find the middle. You can find your own middle. And I kind of like extreme opposites as well. So I, I think that that could be really, really fun to, to put, put them together. Uh, what I would be careful of if I, if I would attempt a, a sequel to this is really um, um, making, the, making the older generation more, okay, because okay, we put a lot of time in, we have a lot of wisdom, which is true, but making them a template for something that you know, the, the newer generation might not actually do that similar way um, and I do I do really see and I agree with you that the younger generation they, they do everything has to be fast and it also means they absorb a lot of information and get a lot of different experiences but there is a tendency to quit really early and to oh this is not what I want uh, do something else which I used to do as a, as a, as a kid as well so I, I guess it's a, something of the ages but you do see that 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 kids find movies or or, or media boring very very quickly um i read some read an article about like what is the attention span or the retention uh span mm -hmm. of, of of movies and clips and it's it's a staggering eight seconds <laughs> with a cap like with a with an attention span cap at five so you know and it isn't and i'm not saying it's bad it's just evolution of how we digest information but um it, it, it it's interesting to really Mm, I'm having a ah, I'm yeah. Having one I of see those your moments. eyes glisten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you needed to be really different. You needed to really offset yourself with a lot of um, absurdity, a lot of a lot of difference, in order to understand yourself. Difference is now normal. Yeah. Distraction is normal. All of those things. Disruption is normal. So what are the costumes now? So no. So basically, to come back to an understanding of self. You have to put in that that integrity, authenticity, the sustainability, the understanding of self. So it's the opposite of what it used to be. How do you see that? Like that? That's an interesting. I, I see you haven't quite gotten that uh, <laughs> aha I, moment. I was on a different track uh, right there. You wanted, yeah, I stopped you. <laughs> I, we tend to do that, uh, but it's just interesting for me to see. Uh, okay, if we don't need disruption anymore. To come back to a sense of self, maybe we do need that, um, the track of sticking with something a little longer. But that needs to come from from an internal wanting that. It doesn't come from a teaching, and that's what we see. Well, and, and, and I, think, I, I think I get you. Um, the, the coming back to yourself, even, even for the younger generation, is now very... And, and I love that it doesn't really even matter what, what type of identity you yeah. choose, because... Nobody bets an eyelid, especially in the bigger cities. Like it's like whatever you want to do, do it. If you don't, you know, bore bore somebody with it or, or upset somebody else, or I mean, hurt somebody, or, yeah. mostly hurt somebody else in, in that way. Do whatever you want. Um, but I do see a very clear uh, disruption or need for disruption, and that's not so much in their own peer group, but more against the old because the world is changing. And, and I think the older generations or the, the people that are now desperately clinging on to the last bits of power, uh, you know, change is coming, whether we want it or not. And I think they're fighting against that more than their own peer group. That, that's what I'm feeling. But isn't that also a normal human behavior? Like yeah, rebel, so. rebelling against the system? I, I would be very, uh, very scared if, if nothing was rebelling, because yeah. that means that, you know, that there's something is really wrong. Um, but I, I do agree with you. I think I think ultimately, instead of 
you know, putting on all the costumes. Uh, I think it's more really diving much earlier at a younger age into your your real identity or your you know things that are more more you uh your intuition your feelings your i don't know why i'm doing this but i just feel like i have to do this or i need to do this uh, and that being a valid reason and and you know to to go do it so i think that's that's rapidly rapidly changing but on the other hand kids have also a lot of trouble trouble with all of the information of choice that comes at them and watching you know, i'm going to sound really old saying this but watching instagram and facebook seeing all these examples which are not always real the young people don't look at facebook jonathan so you can so I really yeah, that's really, really how old age. you are <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like instagram or tiktok uh, you know it, it's 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 for them there's so much examples of a perfect life a perfect this a perfect that this is how you do it that uh, yeah, we didn't have to deal with so much confusing information when we grew up. It's a very simple example that I come up with. Um, I remember, you know, Christmas decorations used to come out, say, maybe six weeks before Christmas, and you would get rid of them two, three weeks after Christmas, right? And then you put them away again. But the same went for the whole Christmas sweets in the supermarket and all of that stuff. Then they started becoming available before Halloween. Then they started becoming available right after summertime. So a lot of people were up in arms back then in Germany when, you know, I was like, how, but this is something for Christmas. And so again, having the freedom to have, you know, as a, as an example, have Christmas decorations available throughout the year, having the freedom to have all of it available makes you want to choose when does it feel right for you to do something. And it doesn't imply that it's only okay to do it then or here or where, you know what I mean? So yeah. for me, it is, again, you know, come. <laughs> the growth doesn't happen in the comfort zone, but growth happens through choice and choice comes from freedom. So I think now going through that needle hole or, you know, popping that pimple <laughs> that, you know, we're having to go through as, as, as humanity, everything will be available, everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then you choose. If you haven't seen that movie, go see that movie. It confused the <laughs> shit out of me, but it's fine. That's why this is going to be a great podcast <laughs> because we don't have to necessarily agree. <laughs> exactly. But to my point, you yeah. don't have to agree. Yeah. You just have to find that place within yourself to, understand what resonates with you and and then not get stuck with that to say could and be that tomorrow i watch it again and i go like well, that was the best movie ever made just yeah and, and but that's a, that's a really interesting point i want to sort of dive into that like how do you so pulling the costumes on and i think this is this kind of has been pretty much the same throughout history and i feel now only now the last couple of years it's really changing like exactly the same example that you gave but when you put a costume on and I know when I put mine on or, you know, it, it's, I was an introvert, uh, introvert and I wanted to be an extrovert. I was shy. I wanted to be cool. I was this, I wanted to be that. So it took me so much time to, to peel that off again. It was like, literally, if you, you know, <laughs> you don't take your clothes off in time, they sort of grow into you. Uh, how do you see, you know, what is your version or your vision of how do you make sure uh, you hold it lightly. So when you try a costume on, when do you know it's time to take it off again? And how do you take it off? The most confusing thing ever, right? When you're yeah. in it, because, you know, also you, you start building a feeling of, oh, that's who I am. And I will feel naked if I take it off. I remember, you know, back in the days when I started wearing makeup, at some point you just go, okay, today I needed to go out without makeup. You feel naked. You know, there's just something when something that you're used to is taken away or you're invited to take it off, you just go, that that feels weird. I don't know right, who I yeah. am anymore. But for me, it's really feeling, the more I understand myself, the more I can come to a place of, hmm, it's not a free choice anymore. It's become another system. It's become another, I just gotten used to it again. And I think it's what defines me. So I think I need to do it rather than I'm choosing it from a free place. Yeah. So for me, what I would always say is, check in with yourself, like check, does that still feel good? And if it doesn't, it's the, the same thing with everything else in your life. If you're really not happy with it, take a hard look at it and say no more and change it. 
And you kind of you kind of gave the answer a little bit already. Is like the moment you think you can't live without it, yeah. then it's an armor. Then it's a it's it's a basically a safety mechanism. And you've probably just replaced one thing for the other. Yeah, yeah, highly likely. Yeah, yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah, there's so much more we could speak about, <laughs> and I love that we we have the little red thread of a Mars beautiful quote: "Broccoli Moon Angel Wing." It's broccoli Moon Angel Wing. That is something. Yeah. And if you're going to change your name, just make it fucking wild. Yeah, make know? it ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And absolutely. What is the, just, just to wrap it up, uh, what is the most ridiculous thing? Uh, and, and not to slag off spirituality, because like, like, like I spent 25 years in it and, and, and you use something similar. But what was, what was the, the funniest thing that you remember from one of the courses or, or spiritual communities that you were in? I could write books. <laughs> that might be good to come back to in the next episode. Should we do it like that? No, you're not getting away from oh, this one. No. Okay. We can ask the viewers to. to or, yeah, ask yeah. The listeners send to. in, send in your um, your most <laughs> ridiculous things that that you encountered on your, your journey. personal broccoli moon angel wing story. <laughs> Absolutely. No, for me, uh, probably the most th the thing that stood out most was seeing teachers in my spiritual communities that threw on the identity of the white robe and then took it off and started gossiping about other people and started slagging off their spouse and just moaned about like their victim state. It's not funny, but it is really. <laughs> <laughs> What was it for you? I mean, I, I remember my brother inviting me to, and I think it was Maori, um, Or, or yeah, I think I was pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Maori, and was a um, a pain massage. So it's these massive Maori guys and women, beautiful tattoos, and there's like these six stretchers, like six massage tables in a row, and they had these flat stones, like this, these like that you like you, you you throw in the water to make them skip, but like really big ones, and they warm them up, and then with the edge of the stone, they would go literally into where your your tendons would stick to the bone and then like almost like jam it through your... <laughs> so literally we came into the studio and there were like six people on the benches, like getting the massage, screaming their, like not, not, not in a little bit of pain, screaming their fucking heads off for like 40 minutes straight. And then the next batch and you, you sit there waiting for your turn. <laughs> Oh my god! It's, and it was it was totally okay to scream. They also said it like you let it all out, so it's almost kind of a release thing. My god! And I, I remember being you know almost like cried myself inside out, uh, and it was so painful. And then of course I was really relaxed because I was just basically a trauma survivor. And I remember sitting in the car, like everything hurt, and and, and like I was I was still going like that was great little. And I, and I thought, like, when I was laying in bed, why the fuck am I doing this? Suffering. What is this all about? Suffering. Yeah. That's a whole. That's a whole another thing. <laughs> With like. all respect to to Maori traditions, uh, for sure. But it was something where I needed to make sure, like, this, this is real. What what am I doing? Because yeah. even is back it necessary then, to put but even back then, that? I didn't believe in suffering. Yeah. I just didn't know how to stop it. But then to actually <laughs> look for it, so like, okay. Yeah, so that was, that was my uh, and, and my brother. Uh, uh, I was I talked to him last week about it. He was like, "Oh my god, we did that, didn't we?" He was like, "What the fuck?" You kind of forget these things, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get to put them in a book before we're uh, old and see now. Yeah. <laughs> this was awesome. Yeah, this yeah. was the first one. This this felt felt really. This was the first one, the first episode of our Rude Awakening podcast. If you haven't seen the documentary yet, um, of course, I highly recommend it. But <laughs> form your own opinion. You can go to our website, www.rudeawakening-film.com. And you can see the documentary for free. And um, if you want to put a few bucks towards it, there's a whole um, bonus package that you can purchase with um, about 12 or 15 hours of uh, bonus material, interviews and yeah. um, food for thought. So... We're going to leave you with that today. Uh, any any tip for uh, our listeners? No, no. I think I think just uh, I, I think the the core message of, of this one is uh, feel. This is like like yeah. how can I like in this world with with big changes and in information that's coming at you. Uh, 
how, how can I hear myself and how can I feel myself and what do I need to do to put myself into this, into that situation? And um, for me, as an example, you know, I make sure I wake up in, in quiet and feel my body before I get up and, or look at my phone. Uh, I take a nap during the day sometimes just to reload or in the evening, make sure I don't look at my phone too much. So when I go to bed, I'm calm and I can actually feel. So there's little moments of maintenance that I still have to do and want to do. But when I do, my day or my insights are different than when I think I'm too busy and I'm running around. So for me, that really, really works. But again, the other story is different for everybody else. So there might be some people might go running or... And we'd love to hear from you. If you have uh, a story, what what really works for you, what you would love to share, you can write in, you can you can put uh, little comments into this show or go to our Instagram um, and find us there. So thank you so much for your time with us. Um, it just goes to show that your attention span is a little longer than five minutes. So good, <laughs> good on you. <laughs> and we'll, we'll hear you again next week. Thank I'm looking you so forward much. to it. Bye. Bye bye.